Hello friends, this video on mineral nutrition part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we ended our discussion on nitrogen fixation. So in nitrogen fixation we studied how the atmospheric dinitrogen gas gets converted into ammonia by different means biologically, industrially and atmospherically. Now we will talk about another process of the nitrogen cycle that is nitrification. So what is nitrification? It is a process that converts ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. So in the previous process that is in nitrogen fixation we saw that atmospheric dinitrogen gas got converted into ammonia. So here the ammonia will get further converted into nitrite and nitrates. Now the question is why do we need to convert it into nitrites and nitrates? So we will see that very soon. Now this process is also carried out by prokaryotes. When I say prokaryotes, the organisms without membrane bound organelles, mostly bacteria fall under prokaryotes. It is an aerobic process that is it needs oxygen. So now in the previous process that is in nitrogen fixation, we saw that the atmospheric nitrogen gas got converted into ammonia. So this was nitrogen fixation right now this ammonia will further get converted into nitrites so this is nitrite and this nitrite will further get converted into nitrate so this process this entire process is known as nitrification now the question is why do we want to convert them into nitrites and nitrates? That is because many plants, I mean basically why are we actually converting nitrogen? Because this atmospheric nitrogen cannot be utilized by plants or animals. Now ammonia can be utilized by many of them. Now nitrate is again a better form or a usable form of nitrogen. So there are many plants which can utilize nitrate. Now ammonia cannot be directly converted into nitrate. That is why formation of nitrite is an intermediate step. So the process of nitrification consists of two steps. Step 1 where ammonia gets converted to nitrite. Step 2 where nitrite gets converted to nitrate. So this entire process is known as nitrification and it happens in presence of oxygen. Now this nitrite as I said can be utilized by the plants. This can be utilized. Right? Okay. Now let us look at the exact process. What are the reactions that take place in nitrification? So the first step as I said is oxidation of ammonia to nitrite. So what is ammonia? Ammonia is NH3 and what is nitrite? That is NO2 minus. So this is nitrite. So what happens in this step? This is ammonia. Ammonia gets oxidized. That is oxygen is added to it to form. NH2OH plus H2O. So on one step of oxidation, NH2OH that is hydroxyl amine is formed and water is released. Now this hydroxyl amine again form nitrite and four electrons. So conversion of ammonia to nitrite in itself is a two-step process. So if you see, this is step one and this is step two. So what happens here? The microbes which are involved, the microorganisms which do does this con conversion, they are known as ammonia oxidizers because they oxidize ammonia. They add oxygen to ammonia. So they are called ammonia oxidizers. Intermediate products which are formed is hydroxyl amine. So hydroxyl amine NH2OH is the intermediate product which is formed. So when I say intermediate product, I mean to say that it if, if there would have been only one reaction where you started with ammonia and you ended with nitrite, in that case there was no intermediate product. But in this case, first you get hydroxyl amine and then hydroxyl amine when again hydrolyzed, it gives nitrite. 
So what are the enzymes involved here? Ammonia monooxygenase and hydroxyl amine oxidoreductase. So for the first reaction, the enzyme which is involved is the first enzyme, this one, E1. So this is the enzyme which is involved in the first reaction where ammonia gets converted into hydroxyl amine. And the second enzyme which is involved in the oxidation and reduction of hydroxyl amine, that is this one, hydroxyl amine oxidoreductase. Right? So this is the first step of nitrification. In this process, small amount of energy is generated, not a very huge amount of energy. So let us look at the step 2. In step 2, nitrite will be oxidized to form nitrate. So what would be the reaction here? Here NO2- will be oxidized to form NO3-. So balance the reaction. So this would be your reaction. You start with nitrite, just oxidize it and you will get nitrate. So here the microbes which are involved or which carry out this process are known as nitrite oxidizing bacteria because of their function because they actually have to oxidize nitrite and in the previous step they used to oxidize ammonia so they were called ammonia oxidizers. If you talk about intermediate products no intermediate products are formed here because it is a single step process small amount of energy is generated so in both the steps step one and step two small energy is generated so we can say that in the entire process of nitrification a very small amount of energy is generated so that was all about nitrification let us talk about the third process that is denitrification so what is denitrification? The name itself is like just the opposite of nitrification. So that was nitrification, that is denitrification. And actually it is the opposite process of nitrification. So a process that converts nitrate into nitrogen gas. So in the previous process, we converted ammonia to nitrate. Now we are going to convert nitrate back to the nitrogen gas and release it back to the atmosphere. So that is denitrification. So it returns nitrogen to atmosphere. So in nitrogen fixation, we started from the nitrogen gas present in the atmosphere. And here we are giving back the same nitrogen gas to the atmosphere. So in the first process, that is nitrogen fixation, we saw that the atmospheric nitrogen was converted into ammonia by the process of nitrogen fixation. Right? Then we saw that this ammonia got converted to nitrite and the nitrite got converted to nitrate by a process called nitrification. So now in denitrification we will see that this nitrite will get converted back into atmospheric nitrogen. So this process is going to be denitrification. So you see now you can actually see that it is forming a cycle. It is forming a cycle kind of a structure. You started from here and then you went through all these and then you are coming back here. It is a cycle and this is how nitrogen cycle is formed. This process is also carried out mostly by prokaryotes. However, some eukaryotes also carry out this process. It is an anaerobic process. So since it is just the opposite process, process of nitrification. So in nitrification, what did we do? We oxidized the ammonia. That is what we do. So here we will not do that. We will just do the opposite thing. So that is, therefore it doesn't need oxygen. So it is anaerobic process. So let us look at. So let us look at the process. So let us see what exactly is the reaction that takes place during this denitrification process. So it starts with nitrite and this nitrite gets converted into nitrate. The nitrate gets converted into nitrite because nitrite was the intermediate product while form formation also. During the process of nitrification also, nitrite was an intermediate product. So now when it is going the reverse way, then also nitrate for first forms nitrite and from nitrite nitrogen oxides are formed and this in turn forms the nitrogen gas. So here you see a lot of intermediate products are formed, these gases are formed, the oxides of nitrogen are formed. 
So this is the process of denitrification. So here the intermediate products are gases like N2O and NO. Now another important thing here is these gases, mostly this N2O, this gas is considered as a greenhouse gas. What is a greenhouse gas? A gas which reacts with ozone and contribute to the greenhouse effect. So it causes air pollution. So this gas causes air pollution. So that means this process has some negative effects on the environment. So that means that is the disadvantage of this denitrification process. So that is a disadvantage that it contributes to air pollution. However, there is an advantage also. It plays a very important role in the wastewater management. Now you might ask why? Because in wastewater, they might have a lot of nitrites and if you, nitrates. And if you have too much of nitrates in water, there are chances that algal bloom might develop on that water. So in order to prevent that, this process removes unwanted nitrates from the wastewater, therefore it reduces the chances of undesirable consequences. For example, it reduces the chances of algal blooms and all that. So that way it plays a very important role in wastewater management. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.